special guest, Linda Lusardi, when she turned her back on page three modelling, she joined a long line of women trying to turn uh, notoriety into fame of a more permanent kind. But now Linda is making her mark on television and tonight we'll see her debut as a travel reporter for Wish You Were Here. At first sight, Lindos looks so much like a film set, you can't believe it's real. Perched high on the hill above Lindos stands its famous Acropolis. It's a bit of a climb, so the villagers offer you the perfect alternative. Today, the whole of Lindos is covered by a strict government preservation order, so there are no hotels, but you can rent rooms in the village houses. This hilltop has always belonged to the gods, and I'm not surprised. If I were a god, it would do me nicely, even if there are rather a lot of mortals about. The main beach can be pretty crowded too, but its sheltered bays offer the best water skiing on the island, as I found out. So, is Rhodes your kind of holiday? Well, it certainly could be. There's no shortage of things to do and see, and the weather is fabulous from May to late September. And that's not really surprising. After all, we are on the private island of the Sun God. Now, if you don't mind, he and I would like to have some time together, on our own, just the two of us. Crikey, did you see that boat in the background? Where was no, it then? No, nor did I. I <laughs> 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 say my boobs look massive. <laughs> they did, did they? actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. My goodness, you've grown a bit since yeah. we saw you last on page well, three. Well, I've lost a bit now, but I was a bit fatter when we filmed that in September. <laughs> the tan was a bit useful as well. I eh? know, I'm all white now, I look terrible. Anyway, tell us about it. Was it a great experience? It was, it was really good fun. I'd never mm. done anything like that before. and Because uh, you've been on telly and stuff, you've done loads yeah, of things on television. Yeah, I've done a bit of presenting, but yeah. to, to go abroad and stand on a beach and have to deliver lines to cameras with like a crowd With everybody around watching. You. I know, yeah, and when you get it wrong, off. they all start laughing, you know, it was a bit mm. off-putting, but... Oh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. it. Mm, always being laughed at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to carry on through if you get it wrong. You can't do it again on this, can you? <laughs> then you managed to take your husband with you and have a decent holiday out of it as well, I did. You? They sort of asked at the beginning, they said, um, do you want to do the piece as a couple? You know, it means that Terry's got to be in every shot. And um, Terry's going, no, I don't really want to, I don't really want to say. I said, uh, you know, leave him on the beach, I'll go and do yeah. it on my own. He prefers for you to be in, in the camera and he, he always stays behind us. That's right. Yeah. And he laughed when I was up at six o'clock in the morning and he could Doing lie in work. after his hangover, yeah. you know. Terry, it's, it's, it's <laughs> fascinating his influence on your career. He's been a really sort of stable influence, hasn't he? Sort he of has the really. The voice of reason. Yes, I think, you know, um, Having Which him is... there for 15 years, I mean, we've been together 15 years And you now. met by chance in a nightclub. I was going to say, it's surprising he considering did. the way you met him. Which is really by chance, wasn't it? I know, it was a friend of a friend, you know, and we were sort of standing in a group and uh, I was being bothered by a fella and uh, I said, look, I'm here Has with my husband. Has that ever happened to you before? Not very no, often, no, no, I can't Nick. imagine it does. And, um, and uh, the first words I ever said was, look, I'm here with my husband. And he said, who's your husband? I said, this guy here. So you just picked on him, did yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> and the guy said to Terry, you know, are you her husband? And he went, yes, I am, actually. So it was a lovely way, really, that we met. Yeah, and Anne was intrigued earlier about how you, you were saying that you wanted one of these gone with the wind staircases. Yeah, because Terry's home. a builder, you see. Yeah. Well, it was quite funny because you know when you we, when you buy a plot of land and they draw all the lines sort of where the rooms are going to be, and I said I'll have the staircase come down like this, you know, and he said you can't fit one of those staircases in there. The hall's that big, you know, when it's a little square on a piece well, of I've paper. Well, I've always but... wanted a gone with the wind type oh, staircase. Oh, I know, it'd be wonderful. And he talked you out of it. Well, we're just renovating a farm now that's that's enormous. It's seven thousand square feet of living space. So. I might be able to have one in there. Crumbs. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been phoning in saying, Veronica Smith from Lewisham says, I would have a soundproof, a soundproof playroom built so I could drown out the sound of my kids. Uh, Maura Thompson says from my Aldershot... six kids, I see it Six says kids, there. yeah. Maura Thompson from Aldershot says, my ideal home would have a big staircase and an enormous hall like the houses in Hollywood. Yeah. There's nothing like when you come in the front door, if you've got an enormous hall, Absolutely. it's really impressive. You can throw a tantrum at the top of it yeah. as well. <laughs> Joyce Lewis from Stockport <laughs> says, my dream is to have a conservatory just like ours, ours out there, the yeah, one you built during the summer, yeah. but with a pool in it. Is Absolutely. that new, that conservatory? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing it over the summer, well, yeah. actually, really? Terry did the plans and I just built it. <laughs> it's very handy around the house. <laughs> You're good with a hod, are you? <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about your page three days and, and yeah. how things have moved on. You, you sort of took the softly, softly approach, didn't you, really, and just sort of changed your lifestyle without making a big deal about it. Yeah, I did it gradually because nothing worse than going into a show on stage, you know, where you take an enormous part that you can't really cope with and mm. then you fail. So I sort of started slowly doing tours and taking smaller parts and my mm. parts are growing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 As you saw in the film. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but um, and now you're um, you're taking singing lessons, although you've obviously sung in panto yeah, and well, stuff I'm like that. Yeah, I'm about to do my. You know, every every year there's a first of something new, and this year it's a musical called Happy as a Sandbag, mm. and it's all just sort of wartime songs. And um, so, I mean, although I sing in pantomime, if you're doing a 14 week tour, you really have to have well, the voice coming from the right place. Are you going to do a Lynn singing... number or something? I am. I'll be doing um, We'll Meet Again. I mean, it's really early stages. I've only read through the script once. But, You've got to uh, do that justice then, haven't you, I suppose? And you're going to play Jane as well. Yes, Jane. And the, the each... What, cartoon Jane, is that? Yes, oh, I think right. so. And, um, you know, every sort of six minutes during the show, it, the whole scene changes and, you know, you're in the bunkers and then it's all Germans and then it's something mm. else. It's, it's really, really, it's a very old piece, been done lots of times. Yeah, the thing is, you've been singing though in panto. <clears throat> Why do you need singing lessons? Well, isn't it so important in panto? Well, only that if it's a 14-week run, you have to do it properly, otherwise your throat just doesn't last. Mm. Why do you think you were the most popular of the Page Three girls? Because you were, weren't you? You kept winning well, awards. Well, only with you, you Nick, wasn't that? <sighs> <sighs> oh. I no, don't but it's know. Well, I don't award know. after award, I'm didn't you? I always ask this. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Excuse mm, me, I'll I go do. make the tea, <laughs> shall I? What? I'm, beginning, I'm beginning to feel like a right lemon here. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm going, I'll go Sorry. make the tea. You go, you get on with it. Go on. <laughs> Are you going to stick around? Up. Hey, she's gone and she's waddled off. I know. Sorry. Serenely <laughs> glided off. She is enormous. Tell isn't us it. She? What? <laughs> no, she let me have a feel what? earlier. She did. Oh, she I let see. Me have a is she, is she see, enormous? I've never experienced all that. You okay. see, I haven't had any children. It's one of the quotes of the year. That I love that one. Linda Lusardi says she's enormous. You're right, actually. Um, we're talking about eligible bachelors later on. So yes. I'd like you to think about what what you reckon make reckon makes the perfect man. Okay. okay? But right now, we're off to uh, Southampton again. Jenny Barnett and interior designer Pam Donald have had. Uh, <laughs> I can't help laughing about it. She is enormous, isn't she? Yes, you're right. Uh, I've had an hour to turn our coffee club at... <laughs>